In a previous set of lessons, we learned how to calculate enthalpy as a measure of the heat released or absorbed during a chemical reaction per mole of reactant. In this set of lessons, we're going to learn how to use those enthalpies in a variety of different types of problems. First, we're going to look at how to use enthalpy values in stoichiometry calculations. Enthalpy, as you know, is usually reported in kilojoules per mole of substance reacting. And this convention allows us to more easily incorporate enthalpy into a balanced chemical equation and use it in stoichiometry to calculate the energy released or absorbed for any amount of reactants or products. So this enthalpy can then be incorporated into our chemical equations in what we call a thermochemical equation. So this reports both the way that the matter changes in terms of the balanced chemical equation that you're familiar with, as well as the way that the energy changes as a result of that process with the enthalpy value. And the enthalpy is usually written after the balanced chemical equation. You'll notice that enthalpy here is given only in units of kilojoules. We left off the moles when it's reported in a thermochemical equation like this. That's because the mole is actually represented by the coefficients for each of those substances in the equation. So an, another way of interpreting this equation, um, putting this into words, is that when one mole of aqueous sodium chloride reacts with one mole of aqueous silver nitrate to produce one mole of the products, solid silver chloride, and one mole of aqueous sodium nitrate, then 69.4 kilojoules of heat energy are released to the surroundings. So this assumed relationship between the kilojoules of energy released and the moles represented by the coefficients on that balanced chemical equation, the one simply comes from the coefficients associated with each of those substances. This relationship actually allows us to scale our enthalpy up or down more easily. So say I wanted to know this. What if two moles of solid silver chloride were produced? How much energy would be released? Well, I can do some stoichiometry. Starting with my two moles, I know that this enthalpy value, negative 69.4 kilojoules, is associated with one mole from the coefficients of the balanced chemical equation of silver chloride, our product. So two moles times negative 69.4 divided by one mole. The moles of silver chloride actually cancel out, and I'm left with negative 139 kilojoules of heat. So the enthalpy that's associated with any thermochemical equation can be used as part of a conversion factor, as long as we factor in the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. So let's look at another example of this. When ethanol combusts at 25 degrees Celsius, the enthalpy of combustion is negative 1,366.8 kilojoules per mole. So the negative simply indicates that we're dealing with an exothermic process that releases heat energy. The kilojoules, that mole portion, is simply scaled to the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So if I'm dealing with ethanol, it's kilojoules per one mole of ethanol associated with the one coefficient that's assumed there. If I were dealing with oxygen, it would be kilojoules per three moles of oxygen that are consumed. And if I were dealing with carbon dioxide, it would be kilojoules per two moles of carbon dioxide produced or per three moles of water produced. So I can use these relationships to do stoichiometry and to answer a question like this. How much heat is produced when one liter of ethanol burns, knowing that the density of ethanol is 0 0.863 grams per milliliter? Now the first part to any problem like this is exactly like any other stoichiometry problem. We have to get the amount that we're given into units of moles. So I can take my one liter, since that's a unit of volume, and I can convert that into milliliters simply using my metric conversion for milliliters. One milliliter is one one thousandth of a liter. 
And then I can convert from milliliters into grams using my density. My milliliters will cancel out as long as I multiply by 0 0.863 grams on top. And I'll be left with grams of ethanol. And next I can convert from grams of ethanol into moles of ethanol if I divide by the molar mass of ethanol, which is 46.08 grams per every one mole. So now that I know the number of moles of ethanol that I'm trying to burn, I can then use my enthalpy. And I know that according to the coefficients, for every one mole of ethanol, I release 1,366.8 kilojoules. So I set up my conversion factor so moles cancels out. And that means that moles of ethanol goes on the bottom, and I multiply by negative 1,366.8 kilojoules, and I get negative 25,598 kilojoules. This is the amount of heat that would be released from one liter of ethanol burning. I round this to three significant figures to match the three significant figures in the number that I'm starting with, which is my volume of ethanol, and I get negative 2.56 times 10 to the fourth kilojoules of heat release. So let's look at another example of this. This time, we're going to find out how much heat is produced when 25 grams of oxygen are consumed in the same reaction in the combustion of ethanol. Now the relationship between oxygen and the enthalpy is actually per three moles, the three coming from the coefficient on the oxygen term. So every three moles of oxygen consumed will release negative 1,366.8 kilojoules, our enthalpy. Now we can factor this into our stoichiometry. Again, we're gonna start with uh, converting what we're given into moles, so 25 grams of O2 into moles for the first step. My grams of oxygen cancel out. Um, I divide simply by the molar mass of oxygen here, which is 32.00 grams. I'm left with moles of oxygen, which I can then multiply by my conversion factor from the balanced chemical equation. My moles of oxygen cancel out. So I multiply by negative 1,366.8 kilojoules and I divide by three. And my answer is negative 356 kilojoules of heat are released when 25 grams of oxygen are consumed. So in summary, thermochemical equations report enthalpy delta H values as part of the equation. And these delta H values are scaled to the moles of reactants and products represented by the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Enthalpy can be used as a conversion factor in stoichiometry calculations to determine the amount of energy produced or needed for any amount of reactants or products.